In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this, the third Sunday of Epiphany. Once again, we meet online. So welcome to those of you who are watching this live um, on YouTube or Facebook or those who will be watching it some other time today or perhaps even later in the week. I hope that you have access to the leaflet with the outline of the service. I'm joined today, virtually of course, by Anne who reads our lessons and by Bishop Richard, Bishop of Bedford, who will be our preacher. A big thank you needs to go to Clive, who has put together the music videos, including the words for you to enable you to join along at home. All of our songs this morning are sung by the choir of St Martin's in the Field, and we are grateful to them for making their music available for us online. We begin our worship with the first of the hymns this morning, and that is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. Now we come to our prayers of penitence. The Son of Righteousness has dawned with healing in his wings and has come to the light of Christ. Now 
Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. We confess together. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we say together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy, your Son proclaim good news to the poor, release to the captives, and freedom to the oppressed. Anoint us with the Holy Spirit and set all your people free to praise you in Christ our Lord. Amen. And Anne will now read our first lesson for us. A reading from Revelations chapter 19, 6 to 10. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and the pe loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, Though these are the true words of God. At this I fell at the, his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn this morning, again sung by the singers of St Martin's in the Field, is God is working his purpose out.
Brian will read for us our gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus changes water into wine. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 80 to 120 litres. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you have young people with you at this point, then you might like to um, retune, as it were, to the diocesan website where there is a children's talk um, on today's gospel reading. For those of you that are um, staying with us, we now have our preacher, the Bishop of Bedford, Bishop Richard. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now standing there were six stone water jars, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Verse 6 from today's Gospel reading from chapter 2 of St John from the wedding feast at Cana. Who has inspired you as a Christian, who by their life and example has encouraged you in your believing and discipleship? When I ponder that question, the answer is a great many different people. Indeed, I'm a Christian in part because of the way that I have seen Christian faith lived out in others. Who has inspired me? Well, I think of Desmond Tutu and a very special 10 minute one to one conversation with him when he came to Leicester some years ago to receive an honorary doctorate. His courage in standing up to apartheid, his contribution to building reconciliation in post-apartheid South Africa and his wide witness to the love of God keeps on challenging me. Who has inspired me? It's not just the Desmond Tutus of this world, it's Sheila who was part of our congregation on a tough housing estate in Sheffield. Life had been hard for Sheila. Her husband had been in and out of jail. One of her sons was estranged from her, but she had a deep well of faith that bubbled over. I will never forget her standing up in front of one of the posh congregations across the other side of the city and simply saying, I want to tell you about a friend. I want to speak of Jesus. And she did. Or in the same era, I think of June, who was a local Methodist on a neighbouring estate. June was on benefits 
and had little to call her own. Yet it was June who has probably taught me more about Christian giving than anyone else. I recall her at an ecumenical study group talking about how she did her giving. She said, when I received my money, my benefits each week, I put aside 10% as my giving for the church. And then at the end of the week, I take it out and give it to my chapel. She said, I do this because I know that if I don't do that, I will spend it and it won't be there when Sunday comes. She knew what it was to give of the first fruits and not the last fruits to the Lord. Who has inspired me? Desmond, Sheila, June, and many more besides. And what connects them? Not just their passionate faith, which for each of them is very real, but on reflection, I see that it's also that they have discovered something of the gift of abundance, of God's abundance being released through them. An abundance of courage and hope in Desmond Tutu, an abundance of trust and faithfulness in Sheila, an abundance of generosity in June. The spirit in each of them setting them free to live life as God desires. Now standing there were six stone water jars, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. I still remember sitting there as a young teenager in church doing the calculation as my vicar preached on this gospel passage. I fear I rather missed the rest of what he said as I contemplated the huge amount of wine that became available and the rather liquid party that presumably followed. It was an absurd amount of wine and yes I know the number of guests may have been large and the wine probably wasn't as strong as we have today but it is an absurd amount especially given that they'd always all they'd already finished off the initial supplies but as we know that's not the point this is about God who provides more than we need who is a God of abundance think of the net full to breaking point with those fish the 12 baskets left over after the 5,000 were fed, the seed that brings forth a hundredfold. A God whose love is overflowing and without measure. This is the new wine of the kingdom, symbolizing the abundance of life that Jesus desires for us, that stands in stark contrast to the self-centered meanness that is so often the order of the day. Somewhat strangely, our lectionary version, at least the printed one, omits at the very start that the wedding feast took place on the third day, a clear link to the resurrection of Jesus and the new wine of the kingdom. The old order represented by those purification jars for the Jewish, Jewish rite is giving way to the living water of the new order. Now standing there were six stone jars, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. So what is God saying to you or me? It's an invitation to let the Spirit work in our lives, to let God loosen all that is tight and restricting within us so that the love, the grace, the generosity, the hope can flow in us and from us. And if that sounds easy, it isn't. Just think for a moment. Have you ever tried to teach someone to be generous? It's hard work. We think that we are generous, but most of us aren't that generous. And some very quickly get 
angry by the accusation. And yet when the spirit gets to work, suddenly our so-called so generosity seems miserly and giving seems so much easier. And that's true of all the gifts of the spirit. Let the spirit free be open to the new wine, the new wine of the kingdom. Just before she moved to Shropshire in due course to be Archdeacon of Ludlow, Fiona Gibson talked to me about one of her parishes. Earlier last year, she said they were heading for a significant deficit. But by the end of the year, the money had come in and they had paid their share in full. How did this happen? Fiona simply said, we prayed about it. The spirit was at work. God's abundance was present. The new wine of the kingdom flowed. It is an absurd amount of wine, but then equally absurd is what the spirit can do through each one of us, if only we set it free. And in response to Bishop Richard's words, now let us affirm our faith in God with the words of the Creed. And so we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our prayers, we have our notices. Hopefully again, you will have received the um, notices as part of the weekly leaflet. Um, just a couple of things I'd like to draw to your attention. Um, two services this evening. Um, one by telephone, our normal evening prayer for um, Sunday evening at 7pm. And then again at 7.30, um, prayers gather for unity in the week of prayer for Christian unity. There are quite a few social events going on either by Zoom or telephone during the week details are on the um, leaflet. I'd um, like to point out that um, for the next uh, month or so uh, we are trying out something new and that is on Wednesday evenings. The Wednesday evening worship will now be on Zoom. Um, details of that um, uh, are available um, and um, on the leaflet I should say. And this week's uh, service will be led by Keith and it is a service to reflect that Wednesday is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Um, also like to point out that uh, there will be um, during February um, some Bible discussion um, by phone um, and Clive will be uh, uh, running and organising that. So if you wish to know something more about that, please do contact 
So now we come to our prayers. So let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen Alan, Michael and Richard, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Ruth and for our church wardens at this difficult time, for the additional responsibilities they bear for the safety of those that they come in contact with and who, um, who we have responsibility for at church. We pray, Lord, that our churches may be open soon, but only when it's safe. Um, we give thanks for all who do so much to be able to reach out to others using technology as we are this morning. And we pray for those churches that remain open, of which there are a few in our town, and we pray, Lord, that they may gather this morning safely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We pray, Lord, for your wisdom for our leaders and government. We pray, Lord, that they may have good counsel. We pray for the nations of the world. Pray, Lord, that we may be united as one in the fight against COVID-19. We pray that we may aid each other. And in particular, Lord, we pray that the availability of the vaccine may be freely and fairly and equitably given around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to our families and friends and to all our neighbours that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. We pray, Lord, for all those who feel lonely, those who feel trapped in, <coughs> in lockdown, unable to go out, unable to see family and friends. Pray, Lord, for those who feel hopeless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. And we've been asked to pray for Larry, Christine, Claire Day, Malcolm Day, Margaret Ashby, Rebecca, Sam and baby Evelyn, for Nancy and Janet, Norman, Jackie and Katie Herbert. And in the quietness of our hearts, any others who may be known to us. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray, Lord, for all who suffer at this time with COVID and its effects. And we pray, Lord, for all who seek to bring healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the face of faith of Christ. And we pray for Margot Kilshaw, and we pray for those who mourn her passing. We pray that she may rest in peace and rise in glory. And we also remember Gus Pennington, Geoffrey Glasscock, Jean Ward, Sharon Thornton, Miriam Cheesmer, David Jenkins, Helen Shaw, Florence Milburn, and Pat Hawkins, all of whom is years mine fall in the coming week. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, in the quietness of our hearts, 
that is to offer up to God those things that are of concern to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as I prepare the table for communion, so we will listen to the anthem sung by the singers of St Martin's in the Field, an anthem called The Call. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Vir Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because in the incarnation of the word, a light has dawned upon the world. You have become one with us that we might become one with you in your glorious kingdom. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Alban and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever Amen. So now we come to the peace. Um, please uh, hold in your mind's eye, in your hearts, those that you would see in church, those that you miss seeing generally. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. On your sheets there is a prayer which you may like to say at this time a prayer of spiritual communion the body of christ broken for us all The blood of Christ shed for us all. Let us pray. Generous Lord, in word and Eucharist we have proclaimed the mystery of your love. Help us so to live out our days that we may be signs of your wonders in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We say together the price, prop, prayer of Christ the King. Christ our King, fill us with your love, that we may gladly speak for you, work for you and live our whole lives for you until all join with us in endless praise of you. Amen. 
I take this opportunity of thanking you for being with us this morning or indeed at whatever time you may have watched this service. There will be a service at the same time next week. In the meantime, please do take care and stay safe. Before the final blessing, we listen to our final hymn, Brightest and Best. The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love this and every day. Amen. This Eucharist is ended. Remain in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.